Here we are at the NVIDIA booth once again, and I'm with Wes Howell from Adobe Systems. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to check out now on Adobe CS6, uh, uh, After Effects CS6, excuse me. Um, we're going to check it out and see what NVIDIA has to do with their new acceleration in, in uh, After Effects. So let's check it out. All right. Okay. Uh, so basically, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, first is going to be our new 3D tracker which is a, an incredible new feature that is an extension of the Warp Stabilizer right. from CS55. CS55, uh, let me get this thing started first. Sure, no, no. By the way, so uh, many are saying that uh, After Effects is the biggest release uh, this version in years. Uh, the community is sort of as far as saying that. Uh, uh, it's just such a tremendous uh, upgrade, I would say. It's like a must-have because of things like the, the new things that you're going to show us right now. Absolutely. Uh, as an editor and a shooter, the two big things for me uh, are the global performance cache, which basically gives you the ability. It's a lot, a lot more intelligent about the way that it uh, preserves your previews and commits them to disk and allows you to have a, a, a big expanded uh, uh, cache, basically, on a hard drive off the side, which is very cool. And the 3D... Uh, uh, features uh, are are incredible as well. Right. Everybody loved the the warp stabilizer, um, and so which is in Premiere Pro now. Yes, it is, and it's CUDA accelerated. Right. So uh, portions of that are accelerated by the yeah. CUDA. So, uh, real quick here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my layer, and I'm going to basically just click to add the 3D camera tracker, and we can see it's pretty much a drag and drop process. And while it's rendering, I can talk a little bit or finish my thought on the warp stabilizer. What made the warp stabilizer uh, amazing uh, was the fact that it intuitively and intelligently created a bunch of tracking points all over in the image. And if you looked at some of the functionality like the subspace warp and being able to be smart about perspective and changing perspective, it was able to do that because it was able to, to glean uh, data from those tracking points, 2D tracking points. So now, uh, w once this pops up, which we're boom, perfect timing. What we can do is we can click the default setting from 3D to 2D. And what we can see is we have, we can expose all of those 2D tracking points, which are just, you know, 2D points. And what happens is After Effects uses these 2D points to generate 3D points, right. which basically uh, what it's doing is it's using the data in this standard flattened 2D clip to generate a 3D camera. It's basically reverse engineering. It's smart enough. You could think of it as saying that it, it's recreating and smart enough to figure out what original camera was used, what the focal length of that camera was, and that's where it gets pretty cool, right? So uh, to demo this, uh, what I'll do is I'll just click on one of these points and uh, just try to find one that's fairly flat. Uh, that works. Uh, Right-click on it, choose Create Text and Camera. I'm going to select the, the text layer, and I'm going to scale that down just a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, w, the keyboard shortcut to go to the rotate tool, or the rotate tool, and I can get that perspective so it aligns eh, fairly well. Um, and then uh, just use the standard selection tool, and I'm going to scoot that over. Um, move it up if I want to. And you can see that uh, the performance on it is great. Uh, right now, we're still using the classic 3D, the same renderer from After Effects 5.5. Um, but what's really interesting here is, and this is what blows me away, is that if I flip it over to 2D mode and I select the camera, what, I reali what you realize is that that text, even though it's small here, it's big here, that text isn't being keyframed at all. Oh, yeah. What we've done is we've recreated uh, a 3D camera from all those tracking points that flies through the scene. Right. Wow. It's pretty cool stuff. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, and then at this point, uh, what we can do is we can flip over. Uh, this machine is using a, a Maximus setup from NVIDIA with two video cards, a Tesla card and a CUDA card. And After Effects is able to use both of those uh, uh, GPUs. Okay. Premiere uh, utilizes one GPU. Right. Uh, and After Effects, it does a great job with one GPU. Um, but in After Effects, you can utilize two. And what we'll do is we'll switch over into ray traced 3D mode. And at that point, what it does is it actually gives us some geometry options for our text layer. So you can see uh, in the actual text layer, we now have the ability to control extrusion depth, among other things. And you can see now we're extruding the texts. Uh, in order to make this more 3D-like or to make it more realistic, there's a number of things that we would need to do. Um, adding real quick here, uh, just for speed, this, the sake of speed, I'm just kind of speeding through this. But I'll show you a finished project that looks much better in just a second. But one of the big things is we can go through and add a light. It's right. a 3D light. We can determine what color that light's going to be. You know, do we want it to be like a cool blue maybe? 
um, maybe something along those lines. And we have control over our intensity, cone angle, cone tether, all those types of things. And now you can see that uh, if we actually, it looks like I backed off my extrusion. Now we're starting to get uh, the bevel, um, more controls here for bevel depth, whole bevel depth, that kind of thing. Um, and it's starting to look a little bit better. Next thing would be to add uh, motion blur, right. maybe add a few lights. It supports uh, environment maps, which is going to be something that people that work with 3D are familiar with. But I'll just flip over here to the finished project so you can get an idea. In this one, we've added motion blur. We've added three lights. You can see there's blue lights and there's a yellow light. And there's also an environment map here. So uh, you see that it's actually oh, yeah. using the environment map as a reference. Um, to help us get a little bit better look in our in our text. And you can see performance is great, it's tracked, it works, and there you go, 3D with NVIDIA. So there you go, uh, great stuff from After Effects and Adobe and NVIDIA. Uh, we're at NAB 2012, thank you.